Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to take a standard stock shot like this and turn it into something really fun like this in Apple Motion. No plugins necessary. I love this technique for a like time lapse shot, like the one we're going to be working on today. Um, or it has a lot of practical applications. If you're working on, let's say, a real estate project and you've got like maybe aerial photos or video that you're working with and you need to draw out like boundary points, that is also a great use for this technique I'm about to show you. Or just anytime you want to add a little sizzle to any shots you're working on, this is how we're going to do it. All right, here we are in Apple Motion. I'm in a 1080 project, but I'm working with a 4K stock shot because we're going to zoom in and I don't want to lose too much resolution. So I kind of like to do that, you know, use a 1080 project, but use a higher res b-roll shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this shot and I'm going to mask out the Empire State Building. So I'm going to zoom way in on my canvas by hitting Command Plus and I'm going to draw my attention to the center of my screen, drop down and use my BZA mask here and I'm going to cut out around the Empire State Building. Guys, while I'm cutting out around this Empire State Building, I just want to let you know that the key to success with a project like this is to really start with a plan and a vision and then get to work. Okay, I'm going to zoom out in my project by hitting Command Minus and I'm going to turn off my main stock shot and you can see here that I've got my Empire State Building cut out but I'm not gonna move it, I'm just gonna leave it there. We're gonna worry about that later. All right, let's start having some fun with this project. The first thing I'm going to do is focus on this building, which is front and center here. And let's grab our BZA tool in the center of our screen, and I'm gonna draw a BZA around this building. And then to set it, I just click anywhere in my project pane. Okay, there's my BZA. It looks crazy, we know that. We're gonna dial down the width significantly. And I'm gonna zoom into my canvas and just do a little fine tuning here. Now let's head on over to this button in our inspector called Shape Style. Let's go down to Light and let's select Light Streak. And our Light Streak automatically writes on now let's head on over to stroke again in our inspector window and let's just change the color of the stroke a little bit. I'm going to change this orange to more of a purple, something that's going to kind of match our sky. Let's move the yellow to the center and then let's add another color here, kind of a coral. Now the other thing you might notice is that the stroke starts very narrow on the left side of the building and then gets thicker. I want it to be of equal width the entire way. So let's head down in our inspector window to width over stroke and let's take this keyframe here and even it out. Okay, that looks good to me. Now let's focus on this big building here and on the left side of the screen. I kind of like these like zigzaggy angles. I'm gonna zoom in real tight on this and let's again use the BZA tool and I'm just gonna draw one and again, let's click anywhere in our project pane to set that. Let's dial down the width significantly. Let's head on over to shape style. Again, let's make it a light. Let's head on over to stroke and change these colors again. I'm gonna go with a green to yellow color here. All right, let's head over to width over stroke and I'm going to make the width on this a little on the thinner side. And now I'm actually going to replicate that BZA because I've got all these lines here and I don't really feel like drawing them all in. So I'm going to select that BZA in my project pane. Let's hit replicate and let's leave it at rectangle fill. And we're going to change the number of columns to one. And we're going to change the number of rows to very many. Let's see what we need to do here. Okay, that actually looks pretty cool, but you can see because of the angle of the building, the alignment 
gets lost after a certain point. So what we're going to do is make sure we're selected on replicator, head on over to the properties tab in our inspector window. Let's drop down the four corner option and let's skew this a little bit. So I think it's the bottom right. We need to skew up and over. So what you can see here is that our lights look really cool, but they are overlapping this building here in the bottom left corner of our frame. So I'm going to add a BZA mask to our replicator. I'm gonna be selected on the replicator. I'm gonna hit BZA mask, and I'm gonna cut around this building so we don't see those strokes. And I'm gonna invert the mask. There we go. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is draw my attention to this building here and these three lines. I'm going to have strokes go up those lines. Again, really simple, just with the BZA. Click anywhere in your project pane to make it appear. Dial down that width so we can see what we're working with. Looks good. Let's hit light streak two. And we're gonna leave the color as is, although let's head on over to stroke and play with the width over stroke. Again, I want it to be uniform. And now I wanna make the same stroke happen over these two lines. And I could replicate it, but because it's just two more BZAs, I'm just gonna right click and duplicate here in my timeline. And then I'm gonna stagger the timing of them. So it's like a stair step. And then I'm just going to head on over to properties and reposition these guys. The next thing I'm going to do is play with the face of this building here. Let's zoom in so I can show you what I'm seeing. See this flat edge? It's kind of a, almost like a V shape it looks like. Let's do something fun with that. So what I'm going to do is go over to generators under my library. Let's pick a gradient. I'm going to drop this in at the top of my project and let's head on over to inspector so we can play with these colors. And then let's play with the location of these guys by playing with the start and end values. Okay, now I'm going to move this over to this part of my screen here where I know that building lives. Maybe scale it down a little bit. All right, now I'm going to dial down the opacity on this so I can see the building underneath. And I'm going to use my BZA mask tool to cut out a shape that aligns with this interesting side of this building over the gradient. I'm gonna dial down the opacity on that gradient. I actually want this gradient to sort of like wipe over this interesting face of this building. So I'm gonna do that using a mask, but I already applied a mask to that gradient. So we need to group the gradient just by itself so we can add another mask to it. So I'm gonna go up to my project pane, right click, hit group. Let's use a BZA mask again. I'm gonna make four points. I actually think I wanna start it at the bottom. So I'm gonna start the mask here and let's head on over to the inspector window on this mask and let's keyframe the control points. So I'm going to add a keyframe right here at the beginning for all four of my control points. We're here at the 214 mark. Let's head down a second in my timeline. Let's add another keyframe with these control points. And now we need to actually move the control points one by one at this point. I thought I was gonna soften the edges of the mask, but I don't think I want to. I think I like the sharp edges. Now for our last building highlight, let's draw our attention to that Empire State Building. So if you recall, we cut out the Empire State Building at the beginning of this project. So now we need to add a BZA, but in between our stock shot in our project pane and our isolated Empire State Building. So I'm gonna center up on my shot here just by hitting Shift Z so I can see very closely what I'm doing. I'm going to have a light effect kind of wrap around the building. That is why we cut it out with our masking tool at the beginning of this video. So what I'm going to do is grab my BZA tool. I'm going to start it right here 
And then I'm just going to do just a few zigzags back and forth on this building and then select anywhere in our project pane to reveal our BZA. I'm going to dial down the width on this and I'm actually going to go in with these keyframes and smooth them out so they're nice and round looking. Guys, while I'm doing this, if you're enjoying this video, let me know by giving me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a future upload. Okay, and now that we've got that established, let's head on over again to shape style, light. Let's do light streak four. Okay, now we need to grab this BZA and put it between our base stock shot and the cutout of the Empire State Building. I'm going to drag it in my project pane between those two. So now you can see that our cutout building is laying on top of our BZA. We're gonna mask off this building you know I already have a mask on it because I cut it out from the stock shot. So I'm going to add another mask by selecting it in my project pane, right clicking, hitting group. And now I can add another mask. I'm going to head on over to my BZA mask tool and let's just add a little mask here. And we're going to zoom in real tight to get our alignment correct. So we've got our light effects going. I've got a couple more things I want to do to this shot. Let's head on over to the library. Let's go to particle emitters. Snow flurry is the one that we want. So let's grab these snow flurries and put them at the top of our project pane. Let's drag them to the beginning of our timeline. All right, let's make some adjustments to these snow flurries. I'm going to reposition these flurries kind of like up high in the screen. So they're sort of over the sky more than the city. And then let's dial down the size. So they're more up in the sky area. And I'm going to drop down here in my project pane and let's play with these actual elements. These blurs are the actual elements that make up our emitter. Let's change the color to pick from color range and let's have them sort of mimic the colors that are in the sky, almost like they're pieces of the sky. Now they're much more subtle because they sort of fit in with the colors of the shot. And the last thing we're going to do is make this shot look as if it is zooming in. So we're going to go up to our project pane and hit the top, top group. This is everything included in our project. Right. If I close it up, everything's gone. Let's head on over to properties and let's cue up our playhead to the very beginning of our timeline. Let's make keyframes on scale and position. And then let's head all the way down to the end of our timeline and let's play with the scale. And let's just play with the X value a little bit so that Empire State Building isn't so centered as we zoom in. All right, that's a lot of different techniques for using BZAs to highlight different elements in your live action video. Did you guys think this was fun? Let me know. Give me that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button, you guys, if you haven't already. Thanks for creating with me today. I will see you again.